Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For today's video, I thought I would test some new to me makeup because um, if you saw my ColourPop haul, I did get two full collections. Today we're going to try the Beauty and the Beast collection because one of you said you were interested in seeing that. And then I have some other new stuff, just random. Some is drugstore, like this Revlon serum tint. If you saw my deck of panning video, I pulled this in for the Oh the Shame prompt because I forgot that I bought this <laughs> and it was in my new makeup drawer. And then I was like, well, let's pull out some other things that need to be used. So, um, an exciting update, I, spoiler alert, if you follow like my panning projects, um, I finished my VDL primer. So I'm gonna move on to this RMS Beauty Re-Evolve Radiance Locking Primer. This is just a deluxe sample, but it's in, it's in a project. Okay, my lip is like swollen. I don't know why, <laughs> just ignore that. Um, yeah, this is in a project and I have a use up goal. I think it's my deck of panning. And then I was looking in my shop, my stash, and I haven't been using this Tarte C Hydro Sealer. This is another deluxe sample. Deluxe samples count as full products in my inventory, so it's good to use them. I have the shade Fairlight Beige. I think I have used this before, but I don't remember much about it. I actually don't even know if they still make this. And then everything else, oh no, 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 sorry. <laughs> For a bronzer, I was in my new makeup drawer and I saw this Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Bronzer. I got this in a boxy Lux or no, 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 Ipsy, whatever it's called, Icon Box, I think, or just a regular Ipsy, I don't know. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is it's the shade Amber, which I think is the lightest shade. It's a very nice packaging. So, well, it is warm though. I thought it was maybe going to lean like a grey tone, and I don't like that shade because I don't use bronzer for contouring. Like, I actually want it to warm my face, so this could be good brand new as you saw I just took it out of the box so we'll try that and then everything else is from the Colourpop Beauty and the Beast collection I have the highlighter the eyeshadow palette we're gonna try one of the blushes um, and then I have the lip kits so we'll see where this look goes which one would work best and I have the um, Enchanted Rose Lip Mask, so I'm going to put that on now. And then for setting spray, I'm happy to report I don't have a new setting spray. All of my setting sprays are out of the box and mostly used. So I pulled the two that are in my Shop My Stash, my Complex Culture. This is not really even a setting spray. It's a Daily Blue Light Defense Mist. I use it as setting spray. But I also use it just like throughout the day. I've actually made a good dent in it. And then depending on how the Revlon serum tint looks, if I feel like I need more of a glow, then I'll use the iconic London Prep Set Glow. This is the one that you shake. And I used to really like this, but I don't know if something changed. I hope it's not like the product going off because I still have all this. Um, but the scent of this really gets to me for some reason. It's like it has a fragrance in it. I don't know. I do like it though. It's just the scent is like not necessary. And there's a cat hair in my eye or a fluff. Okay. <laughs> so let's put the lip balm on first. And actually it's a lip mask, but I use these as lip balm. Um... You know, it doesn't matter. It looks like this. I still haven't looked up the smell. 
I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of rose in it, but it also has like a a fruity, like tropical scent. Does it say on the box that I'm just not looking? Because it does have, yeah, it says an enchanting rose flavored lip mask infused with squalane, shea butter, and rosehip oil. So I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm just going to use my nail and dig into this. Yeah, it's very soft. Hmm. It does have, I think, a tint to it. Well, you can see, but sometimes, you know, the color of the product doesn't come off, but I do think that made my lips look rosier. It feels really nice. I'm already, I already know I like the ColourPop lip mask. Yeah, it's just like almost like a lip oil, but with a base to it. So very nice so far. It does have maybe a little sweetness to it, but don't, don't go licking it off your lips because it does taste like lip balm, you know. So that's the lip mask. Um, then let's do the primer. Oh, it still has the seal on it, so I have not used this at all yet. This used to be in my Sephora loves list, but then I guess one day I saw it was a, a perk. Um, so I was like, I'll just get it. Ooh, it looks promising already. It looks like the uh, First Aid Beauty coconut skin texture where like it's actually like a lotion kind of. I don't think it has, it smells nice, but it doesn't have like a, a fragrance or anything. Ooh, I like this already. Honestly, it's also kind of like the VDL primer that I just finished where it's like a lotion that has like a glowy finish kind of because this is called a radiance locking primer That's nice. Ooh, and it feels like hydrating Okay, hopefully I don't fall too much in love with that because I am on a primer no buy Um yeah, I guess we'll go straight into the Revlon Serum Tint now. I have the shade Light Beige 117. It says dot on center of the face and blend outwards. Okay. I think I should have... Yeah. I'm going to wet my sponge, I guess. Because lately I haven't been liking using a brush. And I don't want that to like detract from the product so I will go and wet my sponge and I'll be back. Okay so this is oops that was a tissue from drying my sponge. Um yeah this is what the tube looks like outside of the box. Okay when I went to link this in my last video where I was talking about it I saw that the ones that I could link it said SPF on it. Um so I guess I got the Canadian version that doesn't have SPF or it does have SPF but legally we can't say so on the packaging. It's a whole thing. Anyway, so if you know what this is, it's probably the same product that you might see in your drugstore if you're in the States. So it has ginger root, vitamin C, and vitamin E. The one thing is like, I don't love that it's a squeeze tube because I feel like I don't know. You can't control as much, maybe. It has this tab on it. We'll see, though. Doesn't smell like anything, which is good. The shade looks promising, I think. Maybe a little light. And it was a lot more liquidy than I was expecting for a squeeze tube product. 
So it said dot, oh, dot in the center and like blend outwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's quite light. Maybe because it is in the fair category. What did I say it was? I don't know. Thanks. You're on video. <laughs> I just got brought some breakfast. Okay. Yes, this shade is light. I am not having good luck with drugstore shades um, lately, but I like this so far. It's just, okay, and I have a hive. I am having like a reaction to something. <laughs> I don't know what, cause I just put my skincare on before this video and it's the same that I always use, so. I don't know, sometimes my skin just doesn't want to be nice. I don't know. But this looks nice. Oh. I don't know if that's the primer that's making it so radiant, but it feels like nice. It blended in like seamlessly and it's not, it's not like the e.l.f. was doing, if you saw my, was that a drugstore video? I don't remember <laughs> what I called it. Um, but that was like sitting in my pores and this is like just seamless with the skin. So I'm not gonna put any more on cause I feel like that evened out aside from my redness and blotchiness, don't. <laughs> Look at that, or my swollen lip for some reason. Ugh. But, okay, I like that. The only thing is, yeah, this is more like a winter shade for me because, I mean, we're in summer now and I don't really ever go out in the sun, so I don't know how much my skin will change, but if I get any more tan, that shade will definitely not work. Um, and let's do the concealer now. Now the concealer is going to be darker probably, but because this is fair light beige. And I'm going to use this as a spot concealer. Um, and under eye. But I really don't like to put a lot of concealer on my under eyes. Um, that felt kind of dry, so I don't know how much longer that sample will last me. And I'm just blending it out with the same sponge. I don't know what brand this sponge is. I think I got it in like a multi-pack from BoxyCharm probably like years ago. <laughs> well, I guess the shades work okay together. You can't see like a, a line. Or anything but I did not use a lot as you saw yeah I don't think that concealer was supposed to be so dry <laughs> uh, I mean this is a full tube but it's not I don't know if you can see there's like hardly any product getting on the doe foot so We'll see. Maybe I just need to like mix it up. Okay, everything feels really nice so far. Now for the cream bronzer. This has a like a plastic on top. I don't know if you meant to keep that. Maybe I will just in case. Sorry, my memory card just filled up. I don't know if it cut me off. But I was saying I'm going to be using my LYS Sculpt slash Bronzing Brush. This is the brush I always use for cream bronzer. I already got a fluff in here. Let's see. I do like this packaging for a cream bronzer. It just feels like nice. I did, oh, I might have picked up a lot of product just then. Let's try and disperse. Oh. Yeah, it is. 
It is um, not as light as I thought. Okay, this could have been. This could be where it all goes south. It's a very warm shade. But I did need some more color since that Revlon was so light. It's blending out enough. I just normally would not bring my bronzer down so low. Let's put some on my nose and here. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I don't know how I feel about this shade. Um, I I think the formula is nice. It blended easily, but it almost I don't know. Is it too orange on me? We'll see how it works with everything else. I did pick up a lot too on the brush because I, I wasn't expecting it to be like so soft, I guess, but yeah, that happened. So in the Beauty and the Beast collection, we got two pressed powder blushes. Unfortunately, they have the exact same packaging. One is called Mrs. Potts and one is called Chip. So maybe I'll try both. Let's recall what the shades are. So this is like the more neutral like browny one. I had to close the window. There's just way too much commotion out there. So this the brownie one is chip and then the Mrs. Potts one is the pink. So let's see. I mean I would like to try this one the brown, but I kind of want to see what this would look like on my skin tone because it's very light. So yeah, let's do Mrs. Potts first and if it's too light or whatever, I'll put the other one like on top or something. So I'm just going to use this, um, what is this, La Russe LR304 Angle Brush <laughs> for my blush and don't know how soft this will be. Okay. It's not too soft because it didn't disrupt the um, the rose. That's embossed on there. Can you see that on camera? Yeah. Okay. Do I need to move it down more? I don't know. Did that do anything? Okay, that <laughs> that is very, very light. I think you can see it a little. But I don't usually have to put this many layers of blush on. Do you see a difference? I don't know. <laughs> I think I would say if you have a deeper skin tone than me, you don't need this blush because it probably won't do anything for you. I feel like I see it more here, maybe because the light is hitting it better, but that's very light. But I might, you know, I would like this for like an office blush because I don't do much makeup for the office. And it is giving me like a kind of pink tone. But yeah, this is very light. Yes, very. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's just put a bit of the chip one on top to see if there's like a big difference. Yeah, that one is showing up a lot more. Yeah. 
that's more of like the kind of blush I like. I like a vibrant blush that you can actually see. That's better. So yeah, I think this one would be really just very, like if I want a subtle shade, I would reach for this. Otherwise I would have to mix it with other things to get a lot of use on it. And if you have any deeper skin tone than me, I would say just skip this one. But if you got the collection like I did, I mean you already have it because it comes <laughs> in the collection. But if you're only looking to get one blush from this collection, get the, uh, the chip one. Of course, if you're like a very fair skin tone, because I'm not fair, I would say I'm light. If you're fair, then you, this might show up more pink on you. So yeah, that's my, my thoughts on that. Okay, uh, highlighter. I am excited to try this. This is the Super Shock Highlighter. It's a giant one. Um, in the shade Special Guest. And I thought this was like their other highlighters that I have. But then I realized the other ones I have are from the Soul Body line. Which is like their other company under ColourPop. But this is actually a Super Shock Highlighter in a giant size. So I think they just reused like the Soul Body packaging. But it's a ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter. And it looks beautiful. It's like marbled and very pretty. I did swatch this already. So I think I want to use a fan brush. Um, let's see. I don't remember how the fan brush picks up with the Super Shock formula. Because it's kind of like... Um, oily almost if you know what I mean like it's not a dry highlighter so let's see how this works there's fluff on my face yeah it's I'm seeing it and I do see glitter I think I mentioned that when I hauled that you could see there was glitter in it Ooh, it's pretty though. I don't mind a glitter in my highlighter as long as the glitter doesn't like go everywhere. It like it it should stay where I'm putting where I'm putting the highlighter only. <laughs> and so far I guess it's yeah, it seems to be doing that, so that's good. And I just bring my highlighter like up here. But not too like into my forehead because then I'll highlight my wrinkle. <laughs> I don't want that. So I think with this formula, if you use more of like a this kind of highlighter brush where it's like more dense and targeted, it might pick up on the base more. I feel like with the fan brush, I mainly get getting like the glitter like a very soft, like translucent base. So I'm gonna highlight my swollen lip. <laughs> and I just like to put any extra on my brow bone. But that's the highlighter. I think it's pretty. It's not my favorite. But I like it. You could also use this with your finger probably. And if you wanted to use it um, in your inner corner, I mean, you're gonna have all of this pan to use. So just different ideas. Okay. Now, uh, the eyeshadow. I am going to put, as usual, my Urban Decay Primer Potion. Bring you back. Because I just always use this. 
this might need to be replaced soon it feels like drier than it used to i've had it forever so so this is the palette in the box i showed it to you already in that haul video so i won't go too much in depth and it looks exactly the same <laughs> on the actual packaging it's very cute and this is the inside beautiful so there is no um there's no cream shade in this palette so i'll skip that step if you're new here and normally i use a cream shadow to like um set my eyeshadow primer and just like even out my base but we don't have that in this one um, I'm just going to go right in then to Kind Hearted for my crease shade. It's a very light crease shade though. Overall, this is a pretty light cleaning eyeshadow palette. It's very like neutral with a pop of blue basically. So up to you whether you feel you need that in your life. <laughs> Last time I checked, um, you could still buy the palette, I'm pretty sure. Um, if not, it's probably going to be restocked. Just always check. Well, I'll leave the, the links below. Um, I never know with Colourpop. Because sometimes they bring their collections to Ulta. But I don't, I don't think they have been doing that lately. I think now they have like a set... Um, grouping of products that they sell at Ulta and then their collections are mainly on their website but I don't know I live in Canada so I'm not the best <laughs> one to know about that but I feel like last time I was in Ulta I didn't see any special Colourpop collections I only saw like their their Ulta products but this is a nice shade. It's very light, as I said, but it's doing what I want it to do. It's blending out nicely. Um, but let's like deepen up a little with the shade Beast, which is this like warm brown. Ooh, that one had more like hiccup in the pan, if you can see that. I'm wondering if the shades that have the rose embossed are harder pressed because of that because that first shade has a rose and it wasn't having as much like dustiness again i mention this every time i do eyeshadow on my channel i don't think that's a bad thing i'm just saying as like informational purpose <laughs> i don't know Ooh, this shade is nice though. That went on like so smooth. Again, I should I should just do one eye on camera or else I'll just blab and blab and it'll be a long video. I'm sure it's already long. That was really nice. I mean, I'm gonna like clean it up more, but as a first like put down, I'm liking that. It's almost like a camel color. I mean, it's called Beast, so I guess it's supposed to be the Beast's fur <laughs> color, but very nice. <sighs> okay, I think I'm going to do something fun, like with the colors. Because I always do like this. This row is what I would probably go to the quickest. But there is like this fun like yellow with shimmer. Sorry the lighting is so bright. It's because it's a very rainy day so I turn every light on in this room. But that is like a very pale yellow so I'm interested to see how that would come off on the eye. And then I feel like I just need to use the blue because it's the only like colorful shade. I'm not going to probably use the deeper, like the, this shade today, but yes. Mm, let's see. I think I should do the yellow 
inner and the blue outwards. Or the yellow inner and the blue in the middle. <laughs> okay. Let's just go. So when I'm first trying an eyeshadow palette, like in the metallics, I first like to try them with a brush just to see how it works out. Because I'd honestly rather use a brush, but sometimes you have to use your finger. You guys probably know what I'm referring to. But that's how the blue is picking up. I just tapped off a little and I'm going to press it down. Oh, mm, that's very pretty. And it doesn't look blue at all though. <laughs> it looks green. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I guess maybe this is like a duochrome. It's called Book Lover, by the way. I mean, it looked blue in the pan, but there's, this is not blue. This is like a yellow-green, or am I colorblind? Possibly. <laughs> okay, but so if I use my finger, but that looks blue. Let me swatch this, because now I'm confused. Oh, okay. This is like a duochrome. Yeah, it's a blue base. It's very pretty. Um, I'm sure that it's explained on the ColourPop website, but I don't have time to look at that right now. See? See the blue, but the shift is like a yellow-green. And on my eye, like I'm not getting the blue at all, I feel. So, let's use my finger to like press it on. See? Yeah. I see more of the, whoa. Okay. <laughs> I see the blue now. Yeah, because the blue is the base shade, but the shift is like the shimmery part, so if you want the blue, you're gonna have to either dampen your brush probably would have helped, or use your finger. And now this is everywhere, so. Okay. Okay. Good to know. I'm just going to gently like blend that out in my crease. I didn't like when the shimmer is above my crease because I have like a, I guess it's like a half hooded eye you would say, or like a deep set. So if I only put the shimmer on my lid, when my eyes are open, you can barely see it. Um, now that yellow shade, let's see how that pulls off. I'm going to try this brush that already seemed to have yellow on it. This. Luxie 246 Precision Crease because I wanted this yellow to be more in the inner corner. That one's a little dusty also. It's a matte with shimmer is what I'm gathering. It is, the yellow is showing up which I like. That shade's called Ballroom Dance, this one. And I'm just kind of blending it in to the blue. Okay, I'm liking this. I am liking this. I'm just gonna go back in with that brush I use for the brown to kind of like blend into the blue more. But I think I don't want to add anything else. This is fun. I didn't expect this look from this palette, even though like you could see there was a blue and a yellow, but I didn't know they would be this kind of shades. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that, but there is a shade called West Wing, which you could use to deepen up the inner corner or like your lash line if you wanted to. But other than that, I mean, that's the deepest shade in the palette, so. But so far, this is very fun. Okay, so.
So I'm going, actually, no, no, no. I should finish this eye. I do want to go back into Kind Hearted for the bottom. I just feel like, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes it looks weird when I do eyeshadow on my top, but not on my bottom. So then I feel like I have to do a bottom. I don't know if you could see me this whole time. <laughs> Um, I do have some fallout from putting that blue on with my finger, but it's not terrible. Um, but maybe, yeah, to avoid that, do your eyes first. I never do my eyes first. I've tried, but I just can't get into the habit of it. Um, but yeah, do your eyes first or dampen your brush. I don't need to do that instead of using your finger. Yeah, I just felt like I needed some shadow on the bottom. That's, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else. Well, do I wanna put this? Okay, I do. I wanna use the shade Vivid Imagination for my inner, like, inner, inner corner. <laughs> I don't wanna cover the yellow, but I need a pop of something. Because, like I said, that yellow is not a metallic, it's a matte with shimmer. So just on my very inner corner, yeah, that's what I wanted. And just bringing it down to the bottom and then the excess on my brow bone, just to give a little something. Okay, so I'm going to do the other eye off camera and we'll come back to do the lips. Okay, I'm back. I did the other eye off camera. I did my brows. I didn't use anything new. I'm just using my Kosas um, Trio. The pencil, the air brow, right? Yeah, air brow and the clear brow gel in medium brown. And I did actually use a new mascara because I was using the Benefit Their Real Magnet and I really liked it, but unfortunately it was smudging under my eyes by the end of the day. So I don't know if it's because it was old or if that's the formula. So that one's gone. <laughs> I do not put up with smudgy mascara or flaky. Um, and then I had another one. I think the brand was Beauty For Certain. And I just tried to use that one for the first time, but it was completely dry. So that's in my empties. <laughs> so I went to my next oldest mascara, which is, I think this one. This is the Rare Beauty uh, mascara in black. It's just a mini. I really like this. It's very like much a lengthening mascara more than anything. Like it didn't give me volume, but it, I like how it separated my lashes and it's kind of like that fluffy mascara feel, you know? So I'm really liking this so far. So hopefully this doesn't flake or smudge on me. If not, this will be my new mascara that I'm using. Um, I think that's all I had to say. All I did was I did go in with the shade Beast um, more because I felt like on this eye, I had more of like a wing look going. So I tried to, you know, even out, even it out on this side. And then with the excess of Beast, I did add a bit more on my lower lash line to give some more depth because that crease shade that I used, I don't know why I put the eyeshadow powder back in the packaging. This one, um, Kind Hearted, this is very light. I kind of wish like, I am really liking this palette so far, but I kind of wish this was a bit deeper. And I maybe would like the yellow, the pale yellow, instead of it being a matte with shimmer, I kind of would have liked it to also be a metallic, just so that it would, I don't know though, because I really like how my look came out. And maybe if this wasn't a matte, then you wouldn't see the yellow blending into the blues like as good. I don't know. 
but that's how the look came out and like I said if you want a blue look from this palette you will have to use your finger with this shade or a dampened brush maybe even use the NYX glitter primer or like a sticky primer to get the blue base of this shadow on because otherwise as you saw it was like yellow green at least on camera and in person that's how it looked and now I do see the blue um, since I added it with my finger so yeah that's the look with this palette um, there is also all those rosy tones that I haven't even used well I actually did use this um, in my inner corner and that was pretty so we'll see I definitely need to get more use on this of course and now for the lips I'm just putting everything back in the packaging because I keep my color pop at least my collabs in the packaging for the most part so for the lips, we have the Beauty and the Beast Lipstick and Lip Gloss Duo in Great Adventure and the Lipstick and Lip Gloss Duo in Break the Spell. So this one has the Beast on it and this one has Bell, of course. I don't remember <laughs> what the shades look like. I feel like the lighting is so bad, I'm sorry. It's just so gloomy. Okay, so Belle is the pink one. This is the lipstick and the lip gloss is a very light pink shade. And these lip glosses, um, these are the ultra glossy lip. Yeah, that's all it says. I think the ones in the Pokemon collection were also ultra glossy lip, but they were called pearlized finish. So I think that's a different formula, I'm guessing. Anyway, so we have pink and then we have brown or nude, I guess. Yeah, but it's quite a deep nude at least for my skin tone and that's the lip gloss mm. i feel like i could go either way with this look but i'm kind of more intrigued to try the pink just because i don't know how this will look on my lips if it if it's not good then i'll do the the brown more but i mean this is not as unique i feel it's a it's like a deep brown nude and the lip gloss is kind of like a lighter taupey brown but for sure I'll use that at some point because that's the shade like I reach for the most probably when I don't want to think about you know what colors match and everything but this is more on the pink side so and I, I showed you in the haul but again look how cute this is it has little roses on it so let's see how this looks it smells really nice do i need a lip liner i still have that lip mask on and it feels nice and i also ate while i was off camera so and it's still on there okay i'm not gonna use a lip liner no no i don't need one Ooh. I like this. I think from looking at the tube, you would think this is a more like deep rosy tone, but it's very pink on me. It's like a mid-tone pink, I would say. I don't know if there's a shade of ColourPop. I'm just patting this on, by the way. I don't want it to be super opaque. But I was saying, I don't know if there's a shade of ColourPop lip product that I haven't liked. Even the ones where I go in thinking I might not like it, I do. I don't know what that's about. But let's put the lip gloss on top. And these are doe foot. 
applicator it smells amazing it smells like strawberries and cream or something Ooh. <laughs> that's really pretty it did it did lighten a little I think but it didn't make it unwearable like this is the kind of pink that I like where it's more like a mid-tone almost like a little leaning a brighter pink but I like and yeah I did pretty well without a lip liner <laughs> that feels really nice too I really like the ColourPop ultra glossy lip um, yeah then the last thing is setting spray so I was looking at my skin again while I was doing the rest of my makeup and it looks good I'm liking this so far liking the Revlon way better than the e.l.f. Um, the Camo Hydrating CC Cream. So, yeah. I think I realized I really prefer things that are like serum. That have the name serum or tint in them. I feel like on the whole, they usually end up being better for my dry skin. So, yeah. Very excited about this. This is in my deck of panning. So, I will be needing to use it more anyway. Um, yeah, I like everything, honestly, that I tried today. Yep, the highlighter is glittery. So, but I don't, I don't mind it. Like, I like the ethereal kind of glow. But if you want more of a base, go in, like I said, with a denser brush. But other than that. And the bronzer. Not my favorite bronzer shade, but I did like the formula. And I think it looks fine. I maybe wouldn't have put so much, but I didn't know that it was so soft and that it, my brush was going to pick up so much product. So if I used a normal amount, I would probably like it better. Um, yeah, so for setting spray, I think that's what I was talking about when I went off on that tangent. But that Revlon, it's not like super glowy. It's... Yeah. So I think, like it's not dewy, is what I'm trying to say more. I do have some fallout from the eyeshadow. But, so I think I can use my my Iconic London today. I'm just gonna shake that, just to give me some more. <laughs> the cat just blew up. To give me some more glow. And I like to hide my hair. I would have done this before, actually. Because I don't like to put setting spray on after I've done my eyeshadow. Okay, maybe I should cover my eyes instead of my hair. It doesn't matter. Because, yeah, the fragrance it gets in your mouth. <sighs> okay, that's that. This is in my shot my stash, so. I'm still going to keep using it because I like it. I just wish. Why did they put perfume in it? Anyway. That's it. <laughs> that's my video. Um, yeah, that's all I had to say. So, if you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.